everybody and welcome back to the book club. Finally, after weeks and weeks and weeks of reading Catching Fire, I have finally finished it and I am ready to get back on track with the weekly book clubs. So I know today is, well, right now I'm filming it and it's actually Friday night, but I am super, super, super excited to get this, um, this video up on the website because I, I, I don't know, I, I'm just super happy. I'm super glad that I finished it and now I can finally read the third book in the novel even though that totally sounds weird. I'm going to get into why I sound so excited in just a minute. But I ended up, I finished it yesterday and it left off the really, really, really good note. And I'm super excited to read the next book. So the premise of this book is that this is the second novel in the Hunger Games trilogy. And um, so it follows the main lead, Katniss, through her trials and her, like, her life while her government, known as the capital, that's kind of like the, the big city, um, they're running the 12 districts. But as it turns out, in the end of this book, you find out that they're the 13th district, which is the entire reason why there's a Hunger Games. Um, it actually still exists. They're thinking it still exists. And there's like mines down there. And I think people live there. Um, so what happens is there's the Quarter Quell, which happens every 25 years, and this would be the 75th Hunger Games. So what they did was, because President Snow was so aggravated that Katniss, um, tried to overthrow the government, try to kind of push all the, the reasoning and the problems back on them by, um, trying to eat the berries at the end of the first novel, he basically things up a way to kind of kill her off and try to make sure that the the rebellions within the district don't arise to anything too bad. So he puts all the previous tributes within the districts. They have like one of those pooling things like how they had in the original one, but it's all the tributes or all the, sorry, the victors within all the hunger, like the 75 hunger games. So it ends up that since Katniss is the only female victor in District 12, she ends up going back into the games. And because Hamish and Peter are the only two males, PETA won't let Hamish go in, so he ends up going in as well, and they they go back in. And I'm not going to spoil the entire book for you because I hope that you guys are reading these books along with me, or if you've already read it, I hope you really enjoyed reading it. But if you do know the ending, it's kind of like a plot twist. Now, as I'm reading these two books, I've only read the first two. I haven't even started. I haven't made it down to the third one. I'm really seeing that it's... It, it's very similar to Scott Westerfeld's Uglies, Pretties, Specials, and Extra series, just in the premise that it's she lives in this complete desolate world, whereas where she wants to be, um, the main girl, I can't even remember her name, is like she wants to be in this technological world, and it's it's very weird. One of the big similarities between it is that there's the technology side of it, and then there's the, the barren wasteland. I guess. And another big similarity is that there's the huge force field thing. Um, in the specials, no, the Uglies book, I believe it's the first one, they talk a little about how they sneak into the, the pretties um, section, how they throw themselves off of buildings and they like bungee jump. It's, it's weird. That's pretty much all I remember because I read them a long time ago. But there are a lot of similarities between these two books, and preferably, I prefer the other books better than these ones. No offense, but, like, I can't get in. Like, I don't like these characters. There's something that really irks me about them. Like, I do not like Katniss, for one. I find that she's a very arrogant pig who doesn't take any, like, she's not very appreciative of anything that ever happens to her. She never says, thank you, please. Um, never acknowledges people who are trying to help her and who are trying to help her succeed. And PETA, like, he, he's like a lump. He's like a Taylor Lautner, Jacob Black character, the one that you hate throughout the entire book series, but you love in the movies. I hated Jacob Black in the books. I just wanted to, like, shoot him. Like, I, I hated him. I did not like him at all. And I do not like PETA at all. The only thing that he provides is he provides the knowledge for Katniss to get out of whatever situation she's in. Um, all the other, like, the tributes, like, Finnick, mm, not a huge fan of him either. I think he's, like, one of those backstabbing people. And my friends keep on telling me things that happen in the third book because they're, they're spoilers. They tell me everything, which they ruined Twilight for me. They've ruined this series for me and a couple of other ones. But I know what's going to happen to a couple of the other characters later on, and I'm actually kind of glad I found out beforehand because I, I started laughing because I did not feel for those characters, such as Prim. I... Okay, there is a spoof series of The Hunger Games called The Hunger Pains, with a P. 
Um, and it's written by the, the Harvard Lampoon or Lagoon or something like that. And it's really funny. And instead of it being prim, it's prin for the short form for princess. Oh my gosh, you guys have to read that. I read the first chapter and I am dying laughing. It's hilarious. I might do maybe a little book club on that later. And I realize that this video is already getting pretty long, but please, if you haven't read the Hunger Games series, go pick it up. I advise that you do, considering that there's movies coming out. It's this huge phenomenon that's going on within this generation with older generations and even younger ones. I know that my English teacher is saying that they're going to be teaching these books to the the grade nines next year, I believe. Either that or like, I don't know, one of them. But I'm going to talk about next week's book because I'm really looking forward to it. It's not going to be The Hunger Games. It's not going to be the third book because I have a couple books on hold from the library. So I'm going to kind of spin off because I want to read like a wide variety of books on this for the book club. So this one is going to be a romance novel because this one is like adventure, thriller, romance. It's mini romance, not really romance technically. But this one is a complete romance novel and if you do not want to read it, I understand. This is not the first book in the series. It's actually the fourth book. Um, but I read the other three. So I'm going to do like a mini recap. It's going to be probably a four-parter but I'll upload them all in one day and I'll talk about each and every book but it is from Nora Roberts um it is called Happily Ever After and it looks like this pretty cool and um this is part or book number four part four in the the Bride Quartet series and it's really good. I'm about 100 pages into this one, and I've read the other three, and they are amazing novels. If you do not want to read it, you do not have to, but I do advise that you do pick it up because it's, it's a good book. Same with Catching Fire. As much as I have my reservations about it, it is a good book. Um, and, like, anything to get you reading. It's awesome. So I will see you next Sunday talking about this book. So I hope you guys have a great week, and, yeah, I will see you then. Bye.